certainly the product of his own breath is unchanging and it is perfect. In John chapter 10, verse 35, we read that the scriptures cannot be broken. Matthew 5, or Matthew 5 18 says, uh, Jesus said that not one word of scripture will pass away until it is all fulfilled. So folks, this book is perfect. It is unchanging. It is without error. But also, the fact that this book is from God implies its authority over us. If you're a Christian here this morning, you, you probably would admit, hopefully, that God is your authority. If you're an unbeliever, well, you're your own authority. But if you're a Christian, you would admit this afternoon that, the Bible is your, that God is your authority. But the extension from that is this. If God is your authority and God breathed out this book, then this book is your authority. Every choice that you make, every decision that you make, every action that you do must be brought in submission to the authority of the Word of God. The Bible is, because of that, sufficient to perfectly equip us for every, every good work because it is from God. We can, we can be confident, we can be certain that everything we need in order to please the Lord is in the Bible itself because it is from Him. It is perfect, it is complete, and it is authoritative. Now, not only is the Bible authoritative, though, according to this passage, it is also profitable. You may say, yes, I'm willing to admit the Bible is my authority, but, you know, I face things in my life that the Bible really doesn't talk about. Is the Bible really profitable? We're going to be talking about music over the next three days. Is the Bible really sufficient to help us make musical choices? Does it really say anything about music in the Bible? Well, what does this verse say? The Scripture, the scripture says in 2 Timothy 3.16, All Scripture, notice the word all, every part of the Word of God has profitability for the Christian. It is profitable. This profitability of scripture undergirds its sufficiency. It is sufficient because it is profitable. The Bible is our authority and every part of it is profitable for us as Christians. The term translated profitable here is literally a word that means beneficial or productive or sufficient. Inherent in this word itself, this word prof profitable, inherent in it is the sufficiency of Scripture. So in answer to your question, is the Bible enough for making musical choices? 1 Timothy 3.16 says absolutely. It is profitable. It's sufficient both for our doctrinal needs, what we believe, and also, also for our practical decisions, how we act. The terms in the text teaching and reproof, it's profitable for teaching and reproof. Those terms are most naturally connected to instructing and correcting our beliefs. So what should we believe? Well, the Bible is profitable to give us those kinds of answers. But a lot of Christians want to stop there. Yes, the Bible is profitable for what I believe, but it's really not sufficient for how I act. It's not sufficient for making choices. It's not sufficient, and I've heard this, it's not sufficient for making musical choices. There's nothing about musical style in the Bible, therefore I can do what we want. Essentially, that is saying it's not sufficient. But these terms in the text, correction and training in righteousness, they carry the idea of adjusting and nurturing right living, right contact, uh, conduct. So the Bible is not just sufficient for our beliefs, although it is. The Bible is also sufficient for how we live, how we act, the decisions that we make for bringing ultimate glory to God. Now, the Bible is sufficient. We read this in 2 Timothy 3, 16 and 17. But I want to spend a moment to talk, uh, to talk a moment about what that does not mean. We might say, yes, the Bible is our authority, the Bible is sufficient, but let, let's talk for a moment about what the sufficiency of Scripture does not mean. We've seen that 2 Timothy chapter 3 says that the Bible is sufficient for our salvation and it is sufficient for our sanctification. Because it, because it was breathed directly from God, it is sufficient as our authority and it is profitable for us as a guide as we make decisions. However, this understanding doesn't end all of the debate, particularly in how we make right decisions. For example, if we were to discuss how the sufficiency of Scripture applies to making musical choices in our lives, 
Some people, as I've said, would argue that since the Bible really doesn't talk at all about musical style, then musical style must not be important. They insist that they're defending the sufficiency of Scripture. They say if the Scripture is profitable and sufficient, and if it doesn't talk about music, then, hey, God must not care about it. The debate really centers on what exactly the phrase here in 2 Timothy chapter 3, the phrase that says, perfectly equipped to every good works, what exactly does that mean? Because that really, that phrase could be taken in one of two ways. Let, let me illustrate the two possible meanings of perfectly equipped. After I graduated from college, I lived for a year alone as a bachelor. Uh, two days after I graduated, I immediately started ministry in Illinois. A week later, I proposed to my uh, girlfriend, then fiance, then wife. And, uh, but she had a year of school left before we could get married, so I was alone for a year. I lived for that year in a small apartment, and for a graduation present that year, my then fiance gave me a cookbook called Help, My Apartment Has a Kitchen. She, she gave me this cookbook because she wanted me to eat healthy food. She knew that left to myself, I would enjoy dieting completely on Burger King because that, that's what I liked. So she gave me this cookbook called Help, My Apartment Has a Kitchen. It was designed specifically for bachelors who knew nothing about cooking to help them cook healthy meals. In essence, she gave me this cookbook and said, this cookbook will perfectly equip you to make healthy meals. So I thought, okay, I'll honor her. I'll make some healthy meals. It wasn't long before I recognized, though, that even though the cookbook gave me very clear instructions, it gave me specific instructions about how to make meals, I needed more information that, than was just in there. I mean, what in the world does it mean, brown the pork? I've got no clue what that means. Even when I went to the grocery, the grocery store, I got this cookbook, it gives me a list of things to pick up at the grocery store. I'm like, where do you find paprika? What is paprika? So I ended up having to call Becky on the phone. What does this mean? Where do I find this? And then when I was actually cooking the meal, by the way, I only ended up cooking one meal. Uh, when, I, when I started cooking the meal, I had to call her up. What is this? What does this mean? How do I do this? There was language in there I didn't understand. There were ingredients in there I didn't understand and know, know where, to, where to, I mean, what? It, she said this would perfectly equip me, and yet I needed other information. Now let me ask you a question. Was there anything deficient in the cookbook? Well, no, the cookbook really was all I needed to make a healthy meal. The deficiency was in myself because I didn't understand the instructions in the cookbook or I didn't understand the language of the cookbook or I didn't understand where to find the things that the cookbook said I had to find. The cookbook was a guide for me, but I needed more information to imply its instructions. That, that's one way of interpreting this, this phrase, perfectly equip for every good work. But, there's, but here's another way. Imagine with me for a moment that your parents leave you at home for a weekend while they take a, uh, a trip together. Probably pretty brave on their part to begin with, but let's just imagine that they do that. So they leave you home for the weekend, and in their leaving, they give you a list of things that they want you to do while they're gone and things that they don't want you to do while they're gone. So you've got this list. You need to eat this meal that your mom prepared for you already. You need to make sure that you clean the kitchen afterwards. You need to make sure that you do this and you get up for this and you do this and you've got this list. Okay, So as long as you follow this list, you're going to be okay. There's also a list of don'ts. Do not turn on this particular channel. Do not watch this. Do not do this. Do not go, you know, go here or go there. So you've got this list. Do's and don'ts. And your parents tell you as long as you follow this list, then you can, you can do what you want. Okay, So if you follow the things that your parents want you to do and you don't do the things that your parents don't want you to do, then pretty much within those guidelines, you can do what you want. So if you come to a decision and it's not on one of those lists, then they trust you to be able to make any decision you want. You can pretty much do whatever you want. 